what's up YouTube figures first time really trying to make a YouTube video got the uh, the elements against me it was a nice day started raining now and uh, I'm shooting with my phone so it is what it is purpose of today's video is to show you guys a new project I've been working on a bus yeah why not right so what we have here is a, a dream, as silly as it may sound, for a bus to be a dream, but a dream that I've been having since probably 2008. You're looking at a 2003 Ford E450 bus, 7.3 liter turbo diesel, uh, 140,000 miles and, and pretty low hours. Forgive me, I forget the amount of hours, but we'll check it out when we go inside. Um, it was a paratransit bus, so it does have a functioning handicap ramp. Um, excuse me, wheelchair ramp, I guess. Um, other than that, I mean, on the outside, as of right now, the bus is still a working project, but, excuse me, work in progress. But on the outside right now, not too much to look at. Uh, stock, standard. The only thing you'll really notice from the outside is that the exhaust has been chopped off. Did it for a couple reasons. We can talk about that when I get inside out of the rain. Chopped it off right before the rear axle. Right up there, you can see it give it more of that traditional Ford 7.3 saves a couple of pounds, makes it a hell of a lot cooler, and lowers my EGTs by a few, because for those of you who don't know, but the E-Series vans do not, they're not intercooled. Uh, and this bus is gonna see some time in the mountains, so some of those roads need to get the EGTs down any way I can. So, why, why a bus? Some of you know I like to ride motorcycles, as well as go camping and do some other outdoor activities. And uh, this is my new toy hauler. So, I'll show you the inside, show you what I've done so far. It was pretty stock when I got it. Uh, on the inside had this the standard fold-up bus seats that you would find in a normal um, paratransit bus. Dirty floor, dirty walls, tie-down spots everywhere. Um, but overall, it was in better shape than the outside. Just a lot dirtier. Uh, converted these lights to LEDs. Previous owner did that right before I bought it. But So, let's check it out. Now, as I mentioned, the bus is still a work in progress, um, so there's still a lot going on. I've been I've been meaning to make a YouTube video sooner, but um, to be honest with you, my hat my hat's off to the uh, the full time YouTuber. It is YouTubers. It is much more difficult than I expected to remember to take a camera, to set it up, to stop working, to start working based on what you're when you're viewing, what you're viewing. It's wow. Um, I mean, what you're doing. Yeah, it's just way more work than I anticipated. So uh, here we are halfway through the project and, and I'm just now making my first real video. I do have some clips here and there of, of things that I did, like putting in the radio um, and cutting in some six by nine speakers and, and things like that. So maybe we'll cut some of those into this video. Maybe we'll cut them into a, a another video in the future. But um, I mean, it's we all know how to, well, shouldn't say we all, but most car guys know how to put in a radio and cutting in the six by nines was, was pretty straightforward. But, so the bus. The bus is set up to carry two motorcycles um, on an annual trip that I do down to the tail of the drive, as well as a couple of other uh, trips that I might take, as well as track days. I like to do track days on my motorcycle. So, I mean, the idea wasn't to go full camper build like you'll see some on YouTube. Uh, the idea wasn't to go full off-grid vehicle. The idea was transport a minimum of two motorcycles using the Pitbull trailer restraint system. That's just uh, kind of what you see the plates sticking out of the carpet there. Um, as well as provide some comfort, provide the ability to sleep in it if I had to. Um, and honestly, also just to have a little fun and, and to be different doing so. So... We'll start with the seats. As you can see, I ripped out all of the seats um, that come standard in the bus. And we went with some uh, Chevy, or excuse me, GMC conversion van captain's chairs. 
they still slide, they still recline, seat belts still function, um, and all that good news. And we mounted them on their stock risers directly to the bus, the floor of the bus. Um, really tight fit for that second one, but it does slide forward, and right now it's all the way back. Um, and my one of my friends that will be traveling in the bus most of the time, he's a pretty much a giraffe. He's like six, I want to say six two, six three, and we've tested it, and he, and he can fit comfortably in both seats. Obviously, more so this one, and and you know a little less the the back one, but um, it'll it'll definitely serve its purpose. So. We have the captain's chairs, and then, honestly, I got the captain's chairs for $50, and the couple that was selling them wanted to get rid of the bench seat also, so they threw that in there for free. $50 for all three seats, and I couldn't be happier with the way the bench seat worked out. I wasn't sure if it was going to fit. It indeed fits. It serves a double purpose, as the rear heater is right underneath that bench seat, and I could not figure out how I was going to lose that use that space without removing or moving the rear heater, and, and this worked perfectly. The best news is that that bench seat folds out into a, uh, a bed or a couch, a bed, whatever you would call it. So it doesn't come much further than this pole right here when it's pulled all the way out. It takes up almost no space. You could you could still ride, carry the bikes, and, and have space with it down. And uh, that's going to get some use coming up here in May uh, on a tail of the Dragon Trip since all the hotels are closed. Thank you, COVID-19. Um, so we have the two seats, two captain chairs, the bench seat that folds out into a bed. Next you'll see, this is a Yukon toolbox from Harbor Freight. Um, I got it on a scratch and dent deal, got a really good price on it and it really fits my needs. It provides some storage, not just for tools, but some storage considering there isn't a trunk or a glove box or something like that in a, tr in a bus, um, as well as a workbench area. Um, and I extended that workbench area a little bit with some uh, L brackets, like for a shelving and a piece of wood because I purposely left the Yukon uh, away from the bus wall, and you'll see why in just a second. Uh, and it provides a little you know, storage space back there. So things to come for this, this Yukon area of the bus, there will be a TV mounted on that back corner of the wood right about there. Um, the DVD player will be in one of the shelves down here. Also have an Amazon Fire Stick for when I can stream from my phone or if there's Wi-Fi nearby, but there, there will be a TV in the bus. Um, and that's kind of it for that area. I left the handles and the wheels off of it. It's bolted down to the floor. Um, you have kind of some of the bus essentials over here, some antifreeze, some oil, some windshield washer fluid, some simple green cleaning solution right now because so much uh, time in the bus has been spent on cleaning. Some PPE, goggles, gloves, stuff like that, some cleaning towels. Um, this is just a bunch of extra fasteners, nuts, bolts, stuff like that, that um, because this is all maiden voyage stuff for the bus. Some trash bags, 30 ton um, hydraulic bottle jack, uh, also from Harbor Freight for a really good price, and then some chemicals that you just might need. Um, this side of the bus is, excuse me, this side of the Yukon is empty at the moment, um, besides the toolbox down there, but this is going to be more bike specific tools, uh, as well as bike specific fluids in the door. And uh, the DVD player will be on that small top shelf right there. And then the drawer on the top, and all these drawers lock so that they don't fly open while I'm in it. The drawer on the top right now, there's some tools from a little project I've been, I was doing, but uh, will be like normal storage, you know, my phone charger, stuff like that. Kind of like a junk drawer would be in your house, uh, just because, like I said, there's not much storage inside a bus other than the, the wide open area. Um, and then kind of wrapping up the side, you'll see these are, are a Pitbull product. Uh, they hold the pins for the Pitbull trailer restraint system like you see right there. Um, so if you don't know what the Pitbull trailer restraint system is, there'll be more to come on that. Um, it's how we secure the bikes. There'll be more to come on that in a future video when I actually load a bike in here and, and show you uh, what it looks like with the bikes in here. Um, so I talked about just a little magnet dish with some screws up from a project I was working on. So we talked a little bit about why we would, you know, move the Yukon out. As you'll see behind the bus, or behind the Yukon, is the spare tire for the bus. Obviously, you know, I have a full-size spare, so I'd be silly to travel without it. Um, and that is, there's a tire truck, wheel truck there holding it in, but it's also bolted to the, the wall of the bus using some of the, uh, the rail and fastener system that was there to hold the seats. Um, that's just kind of an extra to have the wheel truck there. Um, because bike will be back here, motorcycles will be back here, and I don't, I don't want it to roll off and hit it. 
And then on this side, so on this side of the Yukon is a 12 volt powered compressor, specifically designed for trucks and 12 volt applications. It's ultra quiet. Um, there will be a splitter in the top of this Yukon right here. So I'll be able to have a, a quick connect right there and use air on the bench if I needed a blowgun or something like that. Um, but for right now, the sole airline runs up along the wall under the carpet, through the back of the wall there, over behind the air conditioning unit and down to that hose reel with a 50 foot, um, three eighths, I believe it is, uh, job smart hose reel, which came from tractor supply on clearance. Everything about this bus was clearance built uh, on a budget, you know, well under 10 grand. Um, it, was, it was just about doing it, you know, making a dream come true, something I've wanted to do for a long time uh, on a budget and, and seeing what we could do. Didn't insulate walls, didn't add false floor, didn't, uh, there will be no like living in this bus. It, it's just a purpose built toy hauler for, for long trips. Um, not sure if I mentioned it already in the video, but we are going to dip the bus. We are going to run a, a DYC, a dipyourcar.com uh, Plasti Dip Kit on it. Um, not really gonna talk about the color. We'll have to see that in a future video, but we're gonna dip the bus and the dip recently came in, so that's there. These bags that you see hanging on the wall here, I, I left, I took most of them out, left a couple of them in. This is the, the bags that would hold these straps, which came um, with the bus. That's how they would strap down wheelchairs. They would hook directly into that system that's kind of like an e-track on the wall there and uh, they would hold the wheelchairs down with those so i left a couple of the bags up um, but for specific purposes this one holds the cleats for the pitbull trailer restraint system so I'll show you this is what one of the cleats are look like um, this one holds the cleats as well as some soft straps and some ratchet straps that may be needed to hold a bike down don't need them with the pitbull trailer restraint system but um, they're there in case i do and then on this side, we have the cleat that, I mean, excuse me, the bag that holds um, everything I would need for air. So there's the tire pressure gauge, the chuck to fill the tires, uh, air blow gun, as well as just some random air fittings and hose repair kit should a hose, uh, you know, rip or need to be repaired. We have the 800 pound fully functioning um, wheelchair lift. So that's actually used to load the bus and we'll do a video, like I said, uh, excuse me, that's actually used to load the bikes. And like I said, we're gonna do a video on that separately because that uh, ramp itself isn't long enough. So we do a little trickery to make it longer to load the bus, to load the bikes. And I've seen some videos where people way overthought it and uh, you know went, had no success with, with these big elaborate um, ramp extensions and I'm, I'm going to show you a really simple approach we took to it um, you know maybe not the cleanest I do have plans for a future uh, permanent extension on it um, but I have a trip coming up and needed to get it done quick so that's that and further along this side coming back down we have a refrigerator really didn't plan on getting a refrigerator this big but I got a really great deal with it on uh, Facebook marketplace and uh, we went with it. So it's got a separate freezer box, nothing special. I mean, these are all over Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace for, you know, 50, 75 bucks. Um, so that's just a shop vac temporarily there because I've been working on the bus the last day or two. So needed to clean up. So we have a TV and we have a refrigerator and those are the only two things right now in the DVD player in the bus that run off of um, house current. So we're handling that via a 2000 watt power inverter, again from Harbor Freight, um, mounted underneath the bus here, excuse me, underneath the seat here. Um, if I can find the switch. There we go. So 2000 watt power inverter, more than enough uh, for just that fridge and a TV. I've been able to run some power tools on it while working on the bus um, and no, no trouble at all. Right now, I don't have a solar set up. I will shortly. Um, and I'm just using the four batteries that come with the bus. So it has three auxiliary batteries because of all the lights um, and wheelchair ramp and things like that. And then it has the battery under the hood. Just one. And on most Ford uh, trucks with a 7.3 would have two. This currently only has one. What else? So we got the two four-inch speakers back there. We'll be upgrading them eventually too, but for right now they're there. Um, the vent that pops open 
straight up for vent or pops open to allow access to the roof. Uh, obviously an emergency exit, but everything in the bus functions the way it should. All the interlocks still function, um, minus the back door interlock, I had to disable that. The idle control to, to ramp up the idle to help charge the batteries and, and handle the wheelchair ramp still works. Haven't really done too much with the cabin. Other than put in the radio and cut in this glow shift EGT gauge, um, I haven't done too much. There's also a pile rear view camera. Um, other than that, the, the interior is stock. Uh, excuse me, the cabin area of the interior is stock. Um, we have the controller for the rear heat, high and low, uh, wheelchair lift controller, courtesy lights, which are those lights that have that were on during the, the filming over there, um, electronic door open and close. Uh, this is the, the rear AC, so we have the temp and the fan control for the rear carrier AC unit back there. Uh, this was a Pioneer radio that I had left over from an old vehicle that I no longer have. The front heater and air conditioner controls still work. A um, little cell phone mount because I also use a, an app on my phone, Torque, if you're not familiar with it. Um, really, really easy to use on Android phones. Uh, and a Bluetooth OB, OBD2 reader uh, to get some more real-time information than, than the bus's gauge cluster provides. So. Um, we have a lot more planned for the future. We're going to add a couple of more speakers. We're going to add a four-channel amplifier. Very soon, we're going to be adding a subwoofer and a, and a uh, Class D amp uh, to handle that. Get a little more sound in here. It's a lot of space to cover, and this bus is not quiet. I'm sure in this video, I'm going to put some sound clips of the exhaust. Um, but yeah, this, this bus is not quiet anymore, so need a little more tunes. Um, what else? We'll finish up the carpet. We'll trim up the carpet. Um, probably not going to carpet the entry area just so I have a, a space or if I do it'll be like a like a floor mat type uh, setup okay. something I can remove quick just so I have some space to come in with dirty feet without messing up the carpet and the rest of the bus but we'll finish it we'll trim it up like you know just some extra piece there and I got a little extra piece hanging over here um, we'll trim it up and we'll finalize some things you know I got, got some screws sticking out of the top of the, the workbench over here it, it's definitely still a work in progress I have a separate piece of carpet that I cut to cover these um, plates from the Pitbull trailer restraint system in case I, when I put down an air mattress back here, they don't rip it. Um, but that would be like for the second person because obviously you know, I was sleeping on that bed. Um, what else? For the inside, I mean, other than some the finishing details, adding the amplifier, adding a subwoofer, the inside is pretty much done. Um, still kind of a lot to do on the outside though uh, I'll take you one more trip around the outside but pretty stock pretty standard that's the battery housings down there uh, like I said three extra batteries down there um, not too much going on out here uh, talk a little bit about those brackets too they, they hold the ramp extension for right now in a, in a future video like I said, previous owner, well, I didn't buy it directly from uh, New Jersey Transit, actually. It came from a school that was using it right after New Jersey Transit. Um, it was New Jersey Transit's backup bus. Got all the paperwork for it. Service records galore. Um, you can see the backup camera cut in right there. So, other than the backup camera, the LED swap from the previous owner, the outside is stock. Um, we'll be plasti dipping it and upgrading a few things. Future down the line changing out the rear bumper, adding a, a, a setup so that I could tow, um, and we have, we have some surprises for the front too, maybe a light bar, maybe a brush guard, definitely got to get some new mirrors, one of them's cracked, um, probably some upgraded headlights, but it's getting close to done, there's not going to be too much more money thrown at this thing, it was set out to be a budget build, and I'm very happy with it so far, but anyway, Thanks for bearing with me with a shaky camera and terrible camera aiming skills, poor weather, and my first real attempt at a YouTube video. Uh, let me know what you think of the bus. Let me know if you want to see how anything was done or how anything was explained, uh, how anything works. I wish I took more videos as I went. Um, I'll take you guys along as much as I can on the finishing up, some of which you'll see a little bit of disassembly and, and hopefully, you know, could answer any questions. But if you have any questions about how to find one of these buses, um, you know what you should pay for them in this area i'm in new jersey um 
or you know what I looked for and I'll be honest this isn't exactly everything it's the year I wanted it's the motor I wanted I didn't want emissions uh, equipment I didn't want EGR to deal with I wanted a diesel I wanted the Ford 73 um, there was a couple other engines I would have wanted too but um, it did not want the 6.0 but I did settle in the one area as I kind of wanted a school bus to have the metal uh, walls and frame as opposed to mostly fiberglass like this is um, and then it would have been much more fitting than I'm at my local high school. So anyway, anything you want to know about how to how to work it, you know, how to convert it, how the bus works, what to look for when you're buying them. I spent years researching this. Um, or anything you want to see, anything you think I should do to it, comment down below. I know it's my first video. Please, if you wouldn't mind, subscribe. There's more to come, um, as well as some motorcycle content, some off-road content, some camping content. There's definitely more to come and then, you know, bus content because most people seem to like that. Um, so if you could, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down. Tell me what I could do better. It's my first one, so I know there's lots I could do better. Uh, and then when I dip the bus, we'll talk a little bit about the work that needs to be done on the outside. As you can see, this bus is not perfect. Um, there are definitely some areas that, that need attention. And we'll be getting to those slowly. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.